Have you ever just really needed a screen for a second or two, or for something like a Raspberry Pi, or desired a small additional screen for your laptop while you're on the road, or even just a portable monitor in general? Well, Gashik sent us their OnLap 1303H portable monitor, so stay tuned to see how that stacks up. And like the video if you guys are interested in seeing uh, an exploration kind of video where we see where the value is in 3D printing something or just buying it. Intel brings DDR4 to the mainstream with their new Core i7-6700K and Core i5-6600K processors. Click now to learn more. The 1303H portable monitor is a 60Hz IPS 1080p 13.3 inch screen powered by 5 volts running at 2 amps, which can be received by up to two different input ports just in case you're having a hard time hitting that amperage level off of one cable. It has a built-in speaker, which is really not that great, but I didn't expect much from it considering the size of the overall package. It's good enough to troubleshoot things, which is cool, I guess. And if you want to bypass it, you'll be happy to hear that there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the side. As far as inputs go, there's a surprisingly large range supported all the way from VGA to HDMI and DisplayPort, which is awesome because this is an impressive amount of inputs for a little monitor. One actually fairly major gripe, though, that I have with this setup, however, is that the inputs require a connector that is the same as a micro HDMI connector, which is the only actual cable that's included in the box. Notice how the VGA input is the same as the HDMI input. This may leave you wanting instead of satisfied, because the only cable included is for HDMI, meaning that if you want to use a VGA connector or a DisplayPort connector, you need to go buy the cable off of their website, because I don't personally know anywhere else where you can buy something like a VGA cable that terminates in VGA and micro HDMI. So I tried to do that so I could tell you guys how expensive it was, but unfortunately their website currently has a program execution error, so I guess that's not really going to work out for me. Looking on Amazon, it also showed cables from this company, but they were priced at about 20 bucks each, which is pretty rough considering I found a VGA cable for literally 36 cents. I appreciate the range of inputs, I just wish they would have either had a better solution for this or included all the cables or adapters in the box. On the other side, there's a bunch of buttons like power and random settings changes that show up on standard monitors as well, like changing the input or brightness. This is standard fare, no gripes here. The buttons aren't too big, so they don't often get pressed when you have the case on, and they're easy enough to press when you really want to. Speaking of the case, this thing is freaking awesome! I realize that I'm getting quite excited over what many people are probably going to think is the most boring part, but seriously, it's great. Not only does it double as a multi-positional landscape stand by utilizing an extremely easy to use magnetic arm thing that's housed on the back of the stand, but probably the coolest part is the fact that it will protect the screen and transport by covering it up and adding some soft padded areas on the inside. There are other portable screens on the market, but having them break and transport has been a pretty constant issue with certain ones of them. This should help alleviate those problems. Lastly, we have actual visual appearance, which is actually pretty solid. The screen isn't all that big, which is understandable, so the 1080p doesn't actually look horribly stretched out like it can on like a TV or something. The IPS panel looks quite good, even at wide angles, and its brightness isn't anything to complain about. Brandon even said that it looks good enough to kind of use as an editing monitor on the road, which is high praise. Aesthetics-wise, the bezel is pretty huge, and it's really not that thin in terms of the actual unit itself, but I'll give it a pass here due to the added benefits of durability, I guess. So let's run through some usage scenarios. The first two I wanted to try were pretty straightforward, but directly related to what we do for work. First I had Brandon hook it up to one of our filming cameras to use as an external monitor. This could really help someone who's trying to film things solo. Fixing your position or the position of some object in the shot would be a lot easier if you can see it in a nice large frame which could also be much closer to you. But there were some issues here. For some reason the screen would throw a signal out of range error unless it was set to 60p. 1080p 60, 720p 60, 480p 60, didn't matter, just as long as it was running 60p. Kind of weird, this made me look into the manual that actually happens to say, read before usage on it. So, yep, those previously stated working settings are clearly laid out as the only supported settings with the addition of 1080i 60. 
Now, while I'm sure the master race is like, oh, well, I see literally zero problems here, this isn't a good thing. This can cause compatibility issues for a monitor that I really just want to work all the time. And while most things will work just fine, it will actually narrow the potential list of use cases, including who will use it. Say what you will about frame rates in movies and videos, but our camera guys won't normally film in 60 unless they're planning on slowing it down, which makes this thing useless for them. Then we have the simplest scenario of them all, which is probably the most common use case for this monitor, a travel monitor. Unfortunately, we can't really test this, but I put it through a baggage handling scenario and then plugged it into a laptop and it worked. So that's a pass in my condition if it can survive the baggage scenarios of going through transit. Then we have the idea of a troubleshooting monitor and Raspberry Pi monitor. Being able to take this thing around and test other people's systems and problems, especially if they're having a display issue, could make things a lot easier. But my favorite part is actually, you could just take it around to any of your randomly deployed Raspberry Pis or other various mini computers you have to check in on them and perform diagnosis really easily without having to haul a monitor around if you can't connect to them through a network for some reason. In conclusion, yeah, this thing's cool and it does have its uses, but it's still not a whimsical purchase. At 330 US dollars for a 13.3 inch 1080p 60 hertz screen that you have to buy really expensive cables to use anything but HDMI with, you're really gonna need to justify the portability aspect and make it worth it, which I'm sure some of you will totally be able to do so. And honestly, I'm already pretty excited about bringing it on trips in order to help the editors so that they can have a dual monitor set up for their laptop, so. I don't know. Crunchyroll is a site created by anime fans for other anime fans. They offer the most current episodes of new shows straight from Japan, like Raka and Gate. They also have a large collection of the most popular anime series, like Bleach. And all of the content on their site is professionally subtitled. Head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus, and you can get a 30-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium ad-free. If you enjoy the many benefits of Premium, like 1080p streaming, getting new episodes of shows within an hour of their premiere over in Japan, and being able to stream anywhere, anytime from a variety of devices like your phone, tablet, or even gaming console, you can continue your premium membership to Crunchyroll for only $6.95 per month. So head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus and check them out. Thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop on Amazon. Buying a cool t-shirt like this one or with a direct monthly contribution through the forum. Now you're done doing all that kind of stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click the button in the top right-hand corner to see a channel super fun video where we shoot each other with Nerf guns.